Well, while I'm out in the open, I might as well show you guys. So this be the damage. It's over here, cracked it and cracked it up real bad. And then the whole bumper here came out. Um, I asked my mechanic and he told me that this is gonna cost me like 900 something. So small crack like that cost 900 something, wonderful. <laughs> and then I came also to do the RFID thingy, this little thing right here. So I did it in UM, it's pretty fast, so you know, it's been something I've been trying to get done, so might as well do it on and off day. Alright, <sighs> life moves on. Look at Mr. Guok Guok. Get that work in, boy. I have to hit the gym, because today has been a really emotional day. Too many things are happening, so always good to come back here and just get a sweat out. Really emotional What's up guys and welcome back to Just In Time. I had recorded a short bit in the gym as you saw in the previous video but it's a little bit too loud so I couldn't really use that so I had to kind of reshoot a little bit right now. But stuff happens which is actually a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about. So let me just feel young. So if you guys don't already know I was transitioning from a job to Oh, I was transitioning to a new job so I'd already stopped the previous job and I was just waiting to uh, go in for the first day of, of my new job and there were some complications so I ended up having to actually forgo that job I had to uh, terminate the contract with them which was something new for me because I never had to leave a job before I went in for the first day but that was that and it was emotional for me in the sense that like now I'm without a job, <laughs> no more money. And in my group of friends, like we were joking about it, I had gone from the person earning the most amount of money to now zero. So yeah, that was a bit of an ego hit for me as well. But it was something that really, really caught me off guard. I was not prepared for it, uh, you know, emotionally, mentally, anything like that. And I was really, really grateful that my dad was actually there to help pick me up. And you know, I was just asking him a lot of questions about like, uh, oh, how does this work? You know, did you break any rules or was there uh, types of conflict of interest or how to handle these types of situations? Because he's been in a corporate setting for a lot longer than I have. So he gave me a lot of good advice and I'm really, really grateful for that. And I did ask a couple of my friends and they gave me their input as well, which I was really, really grateful for. So yeah, that was um, a big thing that was happening at the time. And on that day itself, uh, I was in Starling Mall, I think if you guys saw my story that day, I was already circling inside Starling for 20 minutes and this dude just backed up right into me and he damaged my bumper. But a side note, if any of you guys are ever caught in these type of situations, I just want to let you know not to panic. And this guy actually just wanted to uh, settle it right then and there. He just wanted to give me 100 bucks to uh, fix it all. I know these things will never cost just 100 bucks. So I'm glad that I was assertive enough to you know, not take the money uh, for the time being and tell him get his number and call my own mechanic. So yeah, short checklist if you guys are ever caught in these type of minor accidents. Number one, just don't panic and don't get angry either because it really just doesn't solve the situation. Like for me, I was listening to some sermons. Thank you, Jesus. So it did help me not to lose my cool and also any type of car problem you want to think of, right? I have actually gone through a lot with my car. Minor accident, major accident, brake don't work, accelerator working too well, a lot of stuff. So I've come to like Biasa already. I'm very, very like no emotion to this type of stuff. Really. So yeah, just <laughs> yeah. So yeah, just stay calm. Don't get angry. The second one would be to get their information. If it's a big accident, you can go ahead and get the IC and stuff like that. But for small accidents like this, definitely get their number plate actually. Uh, get their phone number so they're contactable. If you don't really trust them, get their RC. But this dude seemed cool, so I was pretty okay with just getting his phone number. He was really, really courteous, so I didn't think he was just gonna like up and run. And third one is don't try and like settle everything right on the spot. I'm not saying like be a dick or like be difficult, but like in this situation, he wanted to just give a hundred bucks to settle it. And I knew that from the damage, it was gonna cost a lot more than that. So I called my mechanic first thing, take a photo of it, send it over to him, ask him how much he's gonna you know what the damage is going to be. Oh yeah, that was just a side note if you guys are ever caught in stuff like that. Or call me. Yeah, so that happened like on the same day that I was expecting the phone call from that company. It was a lot of stuff just uh, running around my head. And it was a lot to take in. I was just like so tired. Like, you know, too gone. Too far gone. But a little quote that I've been holding on to for the past couple of days, especially when all this has been going down, 
is to just roll with the punches. I mean, life is gonna happen whether you want it to or not. Change is coming, stuff is gonna happen when you least expect it. And there's really nothing you can do to just like prepare yourself for random situations like this. Like a guy backing up into your car. So you know, when stuff like this happens, it's really no point for you to get angry. It's really no point for you to just start blaming and you know, woe is me, just mull over it and stuff like that. But trust me, I did go through that phase where every little thing that was happening, I was, I, my temper would just flare. Like doors like this, I broke so many of them because I locked myself out of the room. I locked myself out of my house, out of my bathroom so many times and I was, I've broken so many doors. And it's really just like not worth it. Now I've come to a point that I am rolling with the punches. As stuff comes, dude, just, Roll, dude. Instead of trying to find a reason of why this stuff is happening to you, why not focus your energy on what you can do? Because that's really the only thing you can control. So my model of rolling with the punches is not to question why there's a dude bashing me in my face, but more of how do I keep my feet under myself. So I hope you guys can roll the punches that are coming your way. That's all for this one. See ya. Should I do the hand thing? I'm not sure. It's something that I'm not really, really clear with. I don't know.